What's up guys and welcome to the channel. It's Yolana here, founder and CEO of Subwell. Today we're gonna do a best of video for on running shoes, another one in the series of those best marathon training shoes for fall 2023 races. On is a brand that gets pretty mixed reviews for runners. Some love them, some hate them, some love the style, some hate that suburban mom look. I personally absolutely love these shoes. They're some of the most durable out there. Look at this, I have 300 miles on this pair of Cloud Stratus and ton of gym usage and absolute tank. These things are some of the best constructed in the game. So yes, you know my bias, I like on. In this video, I'm gonna go through all those best shoes and what they're good for. If you like these types of in-depth, hands-on videos, go ahead and subscribe. All right, let's get into it. So first up, we got the Daily Trainer, and from on, that is going to be the Cloud Stratus, and I like these guys so much in 2022. I had two different pairs of them. I'm gonna show you the one that's a little bit less gross here. So this is the Cloud Stratus 2. They're now onto the Cloud Stratus 3, but pretty similar to these. They've just done a little bit of an upper update, softened up the foam a little bit, and closed this hole in the middle for the Cloud Stratus 3. The Cloud Stratus is a really solid daily trainer with a nice planted feel. It is on the firmer side, but that means it has a nice peppy, responsive underfoot sensation. You can see that there's a decent rocker up here, which will help when you pick up the pace. And I've done everything in this from long, easy runs all the way up to, I actually raced a four mile race last year in these, uh, which at the time was my four mile PR. So they can handle everything, really versatile shoe, and one of the most comfortable out there. On is great at doing nice uppers. If you look at this, there's lots of padding around this upper. There's lots of room in the toe box. It's definitely wider than most of those other mainstream running brands like Nike and Saucony and Asics. And then around the back here, you'll see there's a plastic heel clip for added stability. So if you want a nice comfortable daily trainer that can last 400, 500, 600 miles, this thing's an absolute tank. You'll be very happy with it. All right, next up we got the Speedwork shoe, and from on, that is going to be the Cloud Go. Now, in the on lineup, they have a bunch of shoes that overlap, the architecture isn't exactly clear, but I'm positioning the Cloud Go as that Speedwork shoe. It has less of a stack than some of the other ones on this list, like the Monster, and it's not as soft as the newer shoe they have in the rotation, the Surfer. So this is gonna be a really good option for the track when you want something a bit firmer, a bit snappier to hit those fast 5K and 10K paces. It also is more comfortable than other speed-oriented shoes out there like the Adidas Takumi Sen or the Asics Magic Speed. So if you don't want something that's as aggressive, then the On is gonna be a great option. All right, next up, we got the recovery running shoe from On that is going to be the Cloud Surfer. Now, this is the softest shoe in On's lineup. In this one, they've reworked that Helion foam and they've also removed the speed board. So if we take a look at the Cloud Stratus here, you'll see there's this plastic speed board and it doesn't function like a normal plate does in a shoe like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. It's a bit thicker and it's closer up to the foot so it adds a firmer feel. In the recent Cloud Surfer, they removed that speed board and they changed the foam formulation and they also changed the Cloud Pod formulation. So all those three changes, they transform the shoe into a much softer riding feel. So if you want something for those nice and easy miles around the neighborhood after those hard days at the track, Cloud Surfer is gonna be a great pick. I also absolutely love the styling on this and the way that it looks, except for that black color that they had in the men's colorway. Do not get that one. So if you want something stylish as well, that will be good for slower miles and casual, then Cloud Surfer is the one for you. All right, next up we got the long run shoe and from on that is going to be the Cloud Monster. Now, this is one of my favorite shoes for those relaxed long miles. These pods under here paired with the plastic speed board give it a really nice and poppy feel where you don't want to pick up the pace necessarily, but it makes those slower miles a lot more fun. So I did my first ever 16 mile long run during marathon training in these last year and it's just a really solid shoe. I can't recommend it enough for that long, slow distance. If you want something that you're gonna look forward to putting it on, you know, those long runs where you don't necessarily have big bouts of marathon pace, then this is gonna be great. It's not gonna be as poppy as something like the Boston 12, which you could use for those longer tempo efforts or marathon pace runs, but for those two hour sessions where you're just gonna be getting out there and moving and grooving, Cloud Monster is a beauty. 
All right guys, finally we have the Marathon Racing Shoe, that king of the rotation. And from on, that is going to be the Cloud Boom Echo 3. This one was recently released. It has a brand new formulation of Piba, which uses corn as an input. So it's supposed to be a bit more sustainable, a bit more environmentally friendly, a bit more of all those things the marketing team wants you to think. And in terms of a run experience, it's gonna have a firmer feel than those popular super shoes on the market like the Adidas Pro 3 or the Nike Vaporfly. It's also gonna feel a bit more minimal. While the stack is still in that 30 plus range, it doesn't feel as tall and tippy as some of those other shoes. So if you don't like that super soft sensation or you don't like that feeling like you're in stiletto heels when you're out there running, then the Cloud Boom Echo might be a good one to consider. The main issue that I have with this shoe is that they priced it at $290, which puts it $15 more expensive than the Nike Alpha Fly and $15 more expensive than the Saucony Endorphin Elite. Those are $275 and those are the two other most expensive super shoes on the market. It also puts it $40 more expensive than shoes like the Vaporfly and the Asics Metaspeed Edge and Sky and a whole lot more expensive than we're gonna see with the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. So the premium for this is purely brand cachet. There's no new technology that they're introducing here that you can't find elsewhere on the market. It's a Piba midsole with a plate. That's commodity at this point. So why they've decided to put a 40 to 50 to $60 price premium on this absolutely blows my mind. They could do that with some of their daily trainers because they have the brand cachet for the everyday runner. But when you're getting up to those super shoe ranges for those buyers who really want performance, I struggle to see where that premium comes in if the main choice that we're looking to make is, will this make me faster on race day? That's my opinion on it. I would recommend to go with the Vaporfly if you want something tried and true. If you are looking to try out something new or you don't like that soft and bouncy feel, then the Cloud Boom Echo is a good choice. Just know you're paying 40 to $50 extra for absolutely no reason. All right guys, there you have it. Those are the best on running shoes for races this fall. Let me know which brands you want me to do next. I know in the comments, I got Puma and Under Armour. So we are gonna be rolling on those this week. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing. I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.